Hi everybody, Russ Foggin here. So today, I want to talk a little bit about all the smoke behind me. Um, we talk a lot about the Forest Service and federal lands, public lands in general, as needing to be thinned and treated. But <clears throat> we also, as individuals and private landowners, need to do a better job keeping our land clear of burnable debris. Uh, that doesn't mean we cut all the trees, but it means that the stuff on the ground is kept up. So if we do have a fire, it, the burn is low in, in terms of intensity. Um, we also need to thin the small trees away from some of the big trees because when the canopies of the trees are touching and contiguous, that's carrying the flame and making things worse. Uh, another thing is I think we need to expand our utility corridors. We have a fire that's created this smoke here in Colville, which is it's something short of suffocating. Um, and quite frankly, I don't know how long it's going to last, uh, probably a few weeks. And we've got fire smoke mixing from multiple fires. But the fire that caused this, it's about 10 miles from here along the Columbia River, um, I've heard uh, was caused by a tree falling across a live power line and to me that's human caused even though it was wind related uh, if we had figured out how far those trees might fall um, and aligned that with the utility corridor we could have prevented this fire but it doesn't get to the issue of fuel um, we need to make sure the spacing is appropriate to our homes, utility corridors, so on and so forth. But we also need to make sure there are breaks in the fuel, that the fuel is down uh, on the forest floor, that the limbs of the trees are up high enough to where they can be separated, uh, and that wildfire can actually be fought by the guys on the ground and in the air. Um, when we have this amount of fuel, uh, it's pretty much futile and nobody likes this I mean many parts of the of the West now this is August this used to be our most consistent month of weather and yeah we had wildfires and occasionally um, in your area you would have wildfires and it would be smoky but this is now happening almost every year in some places and it's because of the fuel now, you could say it's because of climate change. There's no question that that could exacerbate the issue. But there's also no question that there's too much fuel on the ground. When we have a dry lightning storm, unless it's hitting some place that's been privately managed, or that hits an area in the Forest Service that we've been lucky enough to get to, and around here on the Colville National Forest, we have areas that we've thinned out, where we have a fighting chance. But there's so many areas when it's dry and thick, the fires start and they can't be stopped. So I think we need to ask ourselves, as private landowners, whether we're pro-logging or environmentalists, are we doing enough to clear the burnable debris around our homes and on our private land? Two, are we supporting the efforts of our federal land managers to do what they need to do? and also thinking about things like utility corridors and other places that could start wildfires and making sure that we're removing the debris and also controlling the fuel so we don't have these catastrophic wildfires. Because I'd much rather have pre-commercial burn smoke, which is much lighter than this. I mean, there are mountains in the background that we can't see. If we had that pre-commercial fire smoke, this wouldn't be as thick. But the other issue is we need to thin the forest in order to get to the point where we can pre-commercial burn. Because if we put in those, those pre-commercial, the prescribed burns out on the landscape and the forests are too thick, then it's going to burn the trees too. We need to ensure that we have lands that are set up for prescribed fire. That means forests that are thinned, material that is reasonably spaced so the fires don't get out of control and so we can have a larger burn window as well when we do have to burn those 
those areas. We pre-commercial burn, so when the fires happen like this, in the hottest part of the year, there's less fuel for it to burn and the fires can be put out, especially around homes and communities. The back country, we need to have a further discussion on that. I don't think those fires should be fought unless they're threatening something, because otherwise we're just exacerbating the fuel problem in future years. But that's another topic. Thanks for watching.